Merhaba, herkese iyi akşamlar. Herkese hoş geldiniz demek istiyorum. Bu değerli vaktinizi bize ayırdınız ee, ve sizlerle beraber olmaktan biz de çok çok mutluyuz. Ee, İstanbul Diş Hekimleri e, Odası olarak e, bu zorlu günlerde e, eğitimlerimize, eğitim seminerlerimize devam etmek istiyoruz. Biz bunun için çok çok çalışıyoruz. Başta Hakan hocamızla beraber e, o, o bütün bir ekip olarak. E, ama e, tabii ki şartlarımız bizi birazcık zorluyor. E, bu pandemi şartlarımız. E, zorlukları olduğu kadar bize çok e, büyük güzellikler de getirdi aslında. Bunlardan bir tanesini de bu akşam yaşıyoruz. Ee, dünyanın başka bir ucundan çok değerli, çok kıymetli bir konuşmacımız var bizimle bu akşam birlikte. Ee, Doktor Elena Servinio. Ee, kendisini biz e, bu akşam aramızda görmekten, ara, ağırlamaktan çok çok mutluluk duyuyoruz. Ee, ben kısaca kendisinden e, bir bahsetmek istiyorum. Kısaca kendisini bir tanıtmak istiyorum. O daha sonra kendisini daha detaylı olarak tanıtacak. Çok güzel nerelerde çalıştığını bize gösterecek. Ben gördüm. Vallahi kıskanmadım değil. Kendisini ziyaret etmek, ziyaret etmek de isteriz. E, Doktor Elena e, 2001 yılında Karakas Venezuela'da e, diş hekimliği fakültesini bitirdikten sonra ortodonti doktorasını New York Üniversitesi'nde e, 2007 yılında alıyor ve daha sonra 2011 yılında Lisbon'da uzmanlık derecesini alıyor. Ee, ve e, şu anda özellikle günümüzde e, şeffaf plaklarla, alignerlarla ilgili e, inanılmaz bir tecrübesi var. E, bu akşam bize e, kendisi bu tecrübeleri çok güzel vakalarla paylaşacak. E, benim için e, belki e, ortodontide alignerlar herkes veya şeffaf plaklar dediğimizde çok yeni bir konu diye gündeme gelmiş olabilir. Aslında bayağı eski bir konu. E, Doktor Elena'nın da anlatacağı gibi e, ama gün geçtikçe teknolojiyle birlikte e, çok daha farklı bir boyuta geldi. Yani 10 sene öncesindeki alignerlarla, şeffaf plaklarla artık günümüzde kullandığımız şeffaf plaklar arasında gerçekten çok büyük fark var. Hem doktorluk açısından baktığımızda tedavi yöntemleri açısından çok büyük farklar var. Hem de hastanın rahatlığı ergonomisi açısından çok büyük farklılıklar var. Ve her yaş grubunu kapsıyor artık. Yani küçükten büyüğe kadar. Dolayısıyla bize Doktor Servinio bu akşam çok güzel kendi tecrübelerini bizimle paylaşacak. Ee, bu akşamki konuşmasının başlığı şeffaf plaklarla yapılan ortodontik tedavilerde teknolojinin kullanımı. Ee, dediğimiz gibi tam kendi tecrübelerini bize bu konuda yansıtacak. Ee, aşağı yukarı bir 10 e, tane vakamız olacak. Ee, size e, tabii ki konuşma sırasında sorularınız olacak. Ee, sizden ricamız... Her vaka bittikten sonra e, belki daha interaktif olması adına biz bu konuşmaları her vakadan sonra alacağız. Tabii ki konuşma bittikten sonra da e, Doktor Servinio'ya sorularımız olabilir. Ama mümkün olduğu kadar vakalar arasında ben e, sorularınızı e, Doktor Servinio'ya soracağım, e, ileteceğim. E, ve bayağı uzun konuştuktan sonra artık lafı e, Doktor Elena Servinio'ya bırakmak istiyorum. We welcome you. And uh, it's a great honor for us to be with you tonight. Uh, and we are really waiting impatiently for your lecture. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Didam. Thank you very much for the for your introductions. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, hello everybody uh, here from Lisbon. Um, I would like to thank the organization that invited me here to share with you all my knowledge and my experience with you, the good and the bad, <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you, thank you very much to this invitation. Okay, um, 
I'm ready to share the screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you again. Um, I'm going to start to thank Cuba uh, because I love to be in Istanbul in November, October 2019. Uh, we went there because they invite my husband, uh, Dr. Andres Shen, to, to do a lecture with, uh, on the um, on, on, on Congress. And we enjoy a lot. I love Turkish people. I love Istanbul. I love food, everything. I would like to go again. I hope to see you uh, there uh, because I really like it. Uh, well, uh, like Didam said, um, I'm going to, I, I bring this lecture. I, I really enjoy to do this lecture uh, because I really use digital technology in the, uh, my, the whole treatment. I use digital technology right now. Uh, um, in our clinic, we are a hundred percent digital technology. Okay. Uh, well, like I did and said, I came from Venezuela. I'm born in Venezuela. I did my dental school there. Uh, I'm really proud of my country. Um, then I moved to New York. Okay. I did a one year program, international program. I, I share with these people, amazing people from all over the world. Today, we, we, we still be friends. Then I stay one year there, uh, uh, working with my faculty, Dr. John Lai in Chinatown. And we had per day 150 patients per day. We, we, he has seven shares and I learned a lot, biomechanic, braces, everything with, the, with Dr. John Lai. Um, then I moved to Lisbon because of love. I just got married with a Portuguese and we had three kids and they are Portuguese and this is my, my, my home now, okay? Uh, we are very proud to, to op we open our clinic in the center of Lisbon um, last, last year in July in 2020 on the pandemic, but we are very proud. Uh, we are very happy. We are in the first floor. This is the clinic. And on the second floor, we have the center of education where I'm right now. And we have five, five um, cabins with the CBCT and the panoramic. And this is our team. I'm very happy to, to show show my team, we have all the specialties, uh, the dental assistants, oral genie, endo, pedo, um, pedo, uh, orthodontics, uh, fixed orthodontics too, because I'm not doing any more. And Soraya is my right hand, sometimes my left too, but she, she, is, she is my, my team. Uh, this is our, our center of education. Okay, I'm not going to take more time talking about me. Uh, let's, let's talk about the clear aligner therapy. Of course, um, it, it, everybody knows, but it's a series of clear plastic aligners that the patient change every week or every 10 days. It depends on the treatment. They are removable. They are very comfortable. And I'm working with Invisalign since 2006 because I did my certification there in NYU. But like Didem said, uh, it was like almost 20 years ago and it wasn't like now. Um, the, the material was very thick. I, I used because I wanted to feel how it, how it was. And it was so, so, it, it, it, it wasn't good to work, okay? It made me headaches and we didn't have the workflow. It, it, it was hard to, to, to, to express and to communicate that the technician, how do you want to, 
to move the teeth and I think, but it was the beginning, okay? Um, since 2013, Invisalign uh, changed the material for the smart track material. And that's the, the big change of Invisalign, okay? Because this material, the, the, the properties are much better, okay? Because more flexible is um, very elastic material that it's going to improve your, your predictable movements, okay? It's going to be more comfortable. The treatment become more, more fast. And of course, the, the digital technology bring us uh, how to see the software and how to, do you want to, to develop your treatment? Since last year, I'm working too with Spark Aligner. Uh, I know there are so many brands all over the world, but uh, since Spark um, in Visa and was the only company that will, for me, give me security to treat my patients. But now, with this part, and I'm trying. Okay, I'm very happy, and I will let you know because I'm just have uh, 25 patients with this part. If I have to talk about literature in 2000, 2021, we have a lot. Of course, that we can we can see how they improve. Uh, now we don't need to convince the the students or the patient that it, it worked. Of course that it worked. Now we prove that it worked, but now we, we show results, okay? Not me, the more experienced uh, doctor that work with Invisalign in all, all over the world. I then improve and I, I, I write an article for the Portuguese magazine I'm just right a, a, a clinical case, an orthodontic treatment with deep pipe for growing patients. I explain everything. I explain my protocol, my my biomechanics, the attachment that I that I use. And if you want it, uh, it's it's on English too that I can send to you, or you can write now the um, the link that I put on the on the lecture. Um, well, I'm not the most experienced doctor in the world talking about Invisalign, but I have a, um, almost 400 patients treated with Invisalign. Okay, 120 patients from there are there are teen um, kids. Okay, I'm using Invisalign team and first, and I'm very happy with this product. Uh, I will show you. Well, let's talk about how is my digital workflow, how uh, I work on my clinic, okay? Uh, first, um, I do an intraoral scanner of all my patients, then picture, intraoral picture, an extraoral picture, x-ray, panoramic and teleradiograph, the cephalometric software, then virtual treatment, your clean check or approval, depend on the, uh, on the common company that you work, then print the aligner, then you give the aligner to your patient and the monitoring could be with dental monitor or, or on, on the appointment for checking. Uh, all my patients, when they came to my, to my share, the first thing that I do is the scanner. Now I'm working with the Itero and I used to work with three shape. Uh, I'm not selling any, I'm not working with any brand of scanner. But if you want to do uh, any clear aligner therapy, it's, it, you must have a scanner because it's going to save you money. You're going to save time you're going to do so many things that it's going to help you to improve your treatment, okay? First, is the best tool to show your patient what they have. Uh, you don't need to explain, they just need to see. And you can see everything, okay? And it's very helpful and it's, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful tool that you can show. 
Then the iTero has something really good with the InVisign that you can show them with a sim simulation uh, before and after. It will just take like five or six minutes, okay? Uh, on this video, of course, I put more speed, uh, but if, while you are taking picture of your patient, uh, you can start to, to work with the simulation. And when you finish the picture of your patient, you're taking the picture, you can show them before and after. Of course, you, you have to be careful that this is a very quick simulation, okay? Uh, um, be careful with the magic that maybe you cannot um, promise to your patient that it would be like this, okay? Of course, the, the, there are limits of, of, of this technique, okay? <clears throat> then, if you, you can send to print, to print the model, to print the model wherever you want to, to use, but you can <clears throat> make appliance with um, in that model. You don't need to do a genetic impression anymore if you have the scan. Uh, <clears throat> another important thing and tool that you, you can share with your colleagues and with the other specialties, what kind of treatment you can do with them or implants or restor restorative but it's really good to share with your colleagues. And then if you are at home, if you need to study your case, you can still get the, um, the scanner, the, the 3D scanner at home. You can study or you, if you need, uh, if another um, colleague needs the scanner, you can still see on your computer the scanner. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> then, if you want to work with um, virtual treatment, you need to have a very good pictures because you're going to work, use that picture to plan your treatment. Okay. And now it's true that. Invisalign has an um, application that you can download the picture from your cell phone. But the picture of your cell phone, they are not going to be like perfect like from this, this kind of off camera of uh, the, the real dimension, the transverse, the wider, everything. I'm sorry. <coughs> The extra oral picture are really important. The angulation of the picture. If you want to intrude incisors or extrude incisors, you need to see how it's a smile. If the, this patient, I can't intrude incisor, okay? And that's why you need a very good picture. Of course, x-ray are fundamental for do any orthodontic treatment. I, I never start any orthodontic treatment without x-rays. And CAT CAM are very useful when you have impacted canines or when you are going to plan an implant or a mini screw. They are very useful to plan with the surgeon where is the impacted canine and to plan the surgery. Uh, now, when, when we study in NYU uh, almost 20 years ago, we already have the digital technology that this uh, is a program and I still working with, with this program. It's very useful for you. And now with, when you have a very good picture, you will have, uh, can see if you can procline, retrocline, if you need a, a forward mandible or retrognatic, it, it's going to help you a lot. Well, when you get all your picture, all your x-rays, you will send to your company and you will need to plan your, you, you have to prescribe for your treatment plan, okay? And you're going to put the pictures and you're going to explain 
to the technician, how do you want to move the team? Why it's very important to have um, good pictures? Because you need to check if the picture are very good at the occlusion, if the technician put the good occlusion of, of your patient, okay? Sometimes the scanner, if the scanner, or if you do PVS impression, they're going to get the occlusion from your pictures, okay? And that's why if you don't, don't, don't see the same occlusion, the picture on your clean check, sometimes you're going to run on the treatment plan. And this is the most important part of the virtual treatment. Why? Because you need to take time to do, let me go. It, it, you need to take time here. You need to plan, you need to express. You need to communicate and to transmit the, the, the technician, how do you want to move? I never accept the first clean shake from the, the Invisalign was part because that is algorithms. It's a computer that is going to, to do the treatment. You have to take time, like you see in this, in this, in this treatment, I, I did 12 treatment plan with this technician. Why? Because I first explained the, where, where I want the, the, the, end, the final position, then how is the way that you want that the final position? And you need to explain them everything. Every tip, you need to explain what do you want, okay? And the more you know, the more experience you have on the, on the clear line therapy, the most time you waste or you take here on this clean check. Why? Because you're going to save time on the share. You're going to save time to change the, the treatment plan with your patient. That's why you need to know orthodontics. You need to know biomechanics because <clears throat> this is the cat designer. They are in Costa Rica. Now they ha we have in Europe and I think in Asia too. They are not dentists, they are not even doctors. They are technicians, they are engineers, system engineers. And they know how to move virtually your teeth, but they don't know if it's, it's been okay or it's the teeth is okay or it's not. They don't care, they don't know, okay? And that's why it's where you have to use your knowledge about orthodontics and biomechanics to develop your treatment plan. Why? You need to know which movements are predictable or not predictable. You need to know, you need to think, okay, why? Because you can get this patient and you are going to blame your patient why you, this patient is not wearing the aligner, but it's not true because if you see this patient, the rest of the aligner are fitting very well. If you, you see something like that on your clean, you open the clean shake and check, maybe you move four tooth all together, it's going to be impossible biomechanically. You need to know how this system works because you need to think in biomechanics, but this system is closed. It's not like the brackets. This system, if, if the teeth doesn't have space, it's going to intrude, okay? And that, that's why um, this tooth in, intrude. And you're going to waste the time because you need to take more impression or scanner and ask for more alignment. Of course, this, you show your patient when show this picture like that. This is the way that your aligner must be all the time. You need to train your patient that how is good, how is fitting good an aligner or not. If something happened, you have to come to my clinic because we need to ask for more aligners. Okay, that now. 
the beginning, I didn't take photos with the aligners, but now when my patient came to my clinic, we take photos with the aligner and without. Why? Because then if I need to check what's going wrong, I need, I can see which one it is not fitting well and why. And you need to think and you need to train because our generation, we, we didn't learn this on school, on the, on the post-graduation, but you need to develop your four systems, okay? Because you will know this, the, this, this is the four system, okay? We have here an a deep bite. If you want to open the bite, today I used to ask to finish with, a, with an open bite, but I know that the teeth, look at here, is not going to be an open bite. I'm just designing my four systems. Of course, there are movements that need to be over-engineered to be, to be real, to, to, to present on the, on the result of, of our treatment. And that's why you need to know the principle of biomechanics on aligner system. You are going to see dental movement, you are going to prepare and to develop your force system, and then you're going to fabricate your aligner. With the bracket, it's at the contrary. You start with the brackets, then you you put on the on on, on the teeth, and then you are going to, to design your force systems. And another um, powerful tool that is the clean shake or the virtual treatment plan, it's when you work with another specialist. Like this case is the same that we are talking about. This girl is missing on one lower incisor. And she decides she is young. She decides that she doesn't want an implant. And I'm agree with her. If she was my child, I prefer them put an implant with 17 years old. And um, if we open the space, uh, she will need a Maryland or something that maybe is not so secure for her. She's a girl, she's young. And we decide to distribute the, the, um, the spaces and make a mock-up with her, okay? And we are, she, she was very happy and she was agree, but we, sh we needed to still working on the canines because the canine wasn't on the same level. Well, we asked for more aligners, she wore more seven aligners and we finished and she, she did the restorative, the composite and she is very happy. I am very happy, very satisfied with this result. It's very stable, okay. Uh, she's smiling, uh, she wore the aligner for one year and a half and she's good, she can, she have a very good occlusion, very stable occlusion, she doesn't have any implant or any some uh, restorative uh, fix and I'm very happy and satisfied with this result. Uh, let me do one to stop to ask for this this case, any questions? Uh, I don't see any questions uh, right at the uh, time, but um, I think it's uh, again I want to un uh, underline it that um, when we are using aligners, it's really important that we are the doctors. Uh, the as you said, the technicians. Uh, they don't decide uh, about the treatment. We have to know our limitations. We have to know the, about tooth movements. So ortho, we have to know about orthodontics. So uh, we have to underline it, I guess. But um, other than that, uh, in these cases, before we do any restorations, aligners are beautiful tools because uh, when we are using braces, 
Uh, we put some coil springs to open the spaces. We put elastics to close the spaces. But uh, again, uh, when we uh, ask the restorative dentist, is it okay? They are saying, okay, give us a half a millimeter or so. But with these aligners, you have the exact positions before you do any restoration. So it's a very powerful tool for us, I guess. Yes, yes. And I see a question now. Uh, why we use retainer at the end of treatment? I think it's uh, not just a question for aligners. It's a question for orthodontics. If you, once we can answer this question at the end, if you want, Elena, or if you want to answer it right now, I don't know. It's it just not about this case, I guess. It is the question was uh, if what kind of retainer? No, why do you use retainer at the end of the treatment? They are saying which retainer? If you, have, you speak... I think all of I think all of the retainers. I think it's not just a case, uh, just only for this case. It's a question for orthodontics, I guess, but uh, let's leave this question at the end, for at okay. the end, or for okay. all the uh, cases. Okay. Uh, there is uh, one question is that, uh, can you describe about the attachments uh, with the aligners? It's not a question again for this case. It's a common question. And uh, again, uh, the rest of the question is that, how much intrusion can be done with aligners? One question is this. Uh, and another one is, uh, again, it's a common question. Uh, okay, let me tell you, another question is that uh, about the attachments, how do we place them? What kind of attachments? How much intrusion can be done if you want? Uh, maybe you can answer the questions with the other cases or yes. at the end, because this is not a question for this case again. And there is another question again, a common question. It says, if we have attrition uh, on the feet, uh, can we uh, finish the case with open bites before doing any restorations, I guess? Another question is this. Uh, Again, okay, this is a question for this one. It's asking about uh, um, midline. What about midline? Is, is, is it a problem if we don't mine it? I think you can answer it. Uh, it's because yes. of the doctor and the patient again, I think. Well, the, in this case, of course, that- You can answer this question. On this case, we are, we we just uh, adjust the, the upper midline and of course the lower midline it's impossible to to align because we just have three three incisors and that's why we need to let um, spaces because if we close all the spaces the overjet is going to be so big and the occlusion is it, it was going to be so stable and now we have the overjet and the overbite very stable and the K class one canine and molar. And that's why um, the, mid the lower midline, it's impossible to, to tie with the upper one, okay? Okay, then uh, um, let's answer the other questions at the end because they are not uh, about this case. So we won't be able to finish. I guess this is only just one case. So yes. let's have the other uh, questions at the end. Okay. And go ahead and don't. Okay, we can continue with the rest of the le your lecture. Okay, good. Okay, um, another good thing is like the, the, our patient keeps smiling during the treatment. Um, when, I, when we have a big treatment like this, this case, um, she had braces and they removed and they said that they couldn't close that face and they just removed and leave the case like that. And she knows that she needs some help because uh, she didn't like the result. And we start, okay, the Invisalign treatment. 
And we knew, okay, that she was going to be in the middle of the treatment with the one incisor shorter than the other one, because if you need to open the, the, the, the if you need to open the bite, okay, because she had a deep bite, you was going, to, the, the, if you are going to correct the correct uh, torque of the upper incisors, okay, to open the, the, the deep bite, you, you can program with her that don't worry, if you look so bad, we can stop the treatment, we can plan a temporary restoration, and you can continue without the attachment and without, um, we can ask for more alignments, okay? And she can still smile, okay, during the treatment, we are open the space for a an, an lower implant, and she's still like this right now, Okay, we're still working. She had a, a COVID and she was so bad, but now she's okay. But she can keep smiling during her treatment. And that's a thing that I like it, working with clear aligner therapy. Another thing like uh, so many doctors and patients ask me, which is kind of, of, of cases you treat with, with uh, clear aligners. Today, I think I, I treat all my cases with Invisalign. I'm just uh, just uh, use um, expander, a maxillary expander, just with Magnamara. But the rest of my treatments I do with uh, clear aligners. Of course, you have to use your. You need to be creative, okay, to to develop your force system. This girl came to me and we had uh, impacted canines. You can see the tipping of the premolar and we asked for aligners, okay? And first we work on the tipping, we work to, she already has the space for the, the, the canine. And she asked me for a colors of the attachment because they love colors. Sometimes they change, they came with pink and they didn't want to change to, blue or, or red, but it's the way that you keep it, uh, uh, coloring with them. And yes, we ask for, for open the way of the canine, okay? We plan our, our traction with the elastic thread. Um, then we, we put, you can see here, a micro it's a mini screw, okay? And you have to explain the parents. Her mom was a surgeon and it was easy for me to explain her that the temporary mini screw between roots and for kids that the, the bone is not too much strong, the, the mini screw is going to be lost, okay? But at least it's going to push hard the canine to the to the mouse, okay, and that that fast in one month we already have the canine outside, and she can wear the rubber band from the aligners to the canine, and of course in you need to improve sometimes on your on your appointment you need to improve you need to have a, some appliance that they are specific to to do a cut for on the on the lower aligner. She is very good. Of course, that we repeat our our cat cam to check the the root of the premolars. That we didn't have resorption. We used to change the position of the button, or the position of the um, of the the the aligner. The, you need to check where is the direction of the force. Okay. And we are already like this. We are we are already uh, on on on the position on the final position. The hard part to move canines it's uh, when you have to move roots, of course. But it's the same with brackets. Okay. Uh, for me today, uh, the mini screw are very helpful tool with aligner because we know that moving tipping of root, it's hard, the distalization. 
But like this case that I'm bringing us today, uh, Graciela came to me because uh, she had braces when she was a child for five years. And they, are, they extract the canine. And she came to me when she was 30 and take a lot of time to get uh, to, to want to, to, to, to fix her smile. Uh, I decided to open the space for the canine because the profile and all too many things that I don't have time to, to explain here. And this is the clean shape. Okay, I plan. It, this case is not uh, recent. Uh, it, it like two years ago that when we we used to use a power power run. Okay, that is this. Okay, I did on on on on on the clinic. Okay, but I'm going to show you uh, what I'm using now. But. Uh, at the end of the orthodontic treatment, she finished like this with the implant more symmetric with the midline almost on. But I start, I had to stop the treatment because she already had a root resorption. It take too much time. And of course that they get tired. Okay. And then I sent to my, to my prosthodontics and they finished like this. She is very happy. I'm very happy. They are very satisfied. It's not the perfect case, but it, it, it, maybe if I start today, I didn't take too much time, but it's like this. And this is another case talking about mini screw and talking about uh, root movements. Uh, we opened the space for uh, implant too, but if you see on this, on these x-rays, we still doesn't have space. Um, and this I open a very good uh, uh, spaces when the space, uh, when you have to open the space uh, bilateral, okay? But on this case, it take times, if you see on the clean check on the left, okay? I put a very big attachment to do tipping of the root, but is, we need to still work in. I asked for more clean shake, but I put a very big mini screw, okay, on the crest of the maxillary to have space for the root to distalize, okay? And this time I didn't put a um, um, um, power arm. This is just an abutment that you can buy you, your elastic thread. And it's very simple. These patients are very common that they want the, to keep it simple. They just want to change the alignment. And you have to keep it simple with them. Very clear, no so many wires are, and you can see that they don't like to have any pain, okay? And you need to try to keep it simple with them, okay? And, it's true that the mini screw, like four or three years ago, it was hard because they still do get lost and you have to have plan A, plan B, plan C, and it's hard. But today we are working with a bigger mini screw. We are working, of course, that my husband is my surgeon and it's good to, to interact with him and to ask him that now you have to put the mini screw here or there. And we are doing a very good team working with this kind of, of treatment, okay? Well, uh, I don't know if we already have 40 minutes. If you go ahead and stop for, for questions. I think your cases are really beautiful. Uh, let's carry on with your case. I, I We have a little bit time left, but... Uh, I think everybody is, uh, will agree with me to see your beautiful cases. To continue. Okay, let's do it. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, if you need to know the limitation, uh, the limitation of the techniques, uh, this case is uh, made me very proud because we did a line with orthognatic surgery. Um, Miguel came to me uh, with braces too. 
um, he looks like this. And her mom asked me, no, the doctor said that with elastic, he is going to correct. Of course, he's not going to correct a malocclusion like this. He was 18 when she came to me. And of course, the surgeon um, suggests that we should wait because boys grow a lot uh, until 2021. 20, we wait a little bit. We start to discompensate uh, this malocclusion and to align both arches. And some powerful tool that bring us the clean shape is that you prepare, you discompensate this patient and you have the virtual jump or the, the surgical jump, you can ask and you can see and check if the, on the surgery you will have any, any uh, contact that it can interfere with the stability of the surgery. You plan, uh, I work very tight with the, with the maxillofacial surgery, we are very friends and we plan all together, okay? This is Miguel, the first, the day before the surgery. He went to Dr. Matos da Fonseca. We made x-rays. He planned everything, digital planning. He, we plan to cut the mandible, to retrieve the mandible. We cut the maxilla in three parts, okay? To, to forward the maxilla and to get to, to change the occlusal plane. And he printed another digital tool that he print the surgical guide, okay? He has a 3D printed. And you can see how Miguel went to the, to the clinic, uh, to the surgery. And this is the way that he, he finished the surgery. He put the micro, macro, implants and it's the way that he tied the two maxilla to do the surgery and they keep it because they can wear the elastics from from that from that micro screws they are very helpful for post surgical he's miguel one week after the surgery and this is miguel right now i can't show you i don't have time to show the the whole process but we're still working <clears throat> with elastic to finishing. Of course, that we don't want to leave them so quick because um, he is growing, and I'm just keeping that mandible on on on the position. And we're still working, but he's very satisfied. He he her mom is so happy, and we are so happy with this result. Okay, uh, another funny time for, for me with the clear aligner. I love to treat kids with clear aligners. Uh, they are very honest, they are very, uh, you have to motivate them, of course, but you have to be, you have to have imagination with them. With Invisalign, they have the blue, of the compliance, you have to tell them that it's a uh, police, that they go with the, them to the school and you can see how they wear the elastic on your cell phone, on the application. And it's good because they know that they have to wear them. They can't, I, I tell them that they can lose at, at the school, but they are very good. This is my first case of Invisalign first. Um, he is the, the son of my, one of my friends and his sister were uh, brackets, but we, we try with him. I just tell my friend, just let's try with Edu, but why? Because he has an anterior crossbar. And on this case, I used to put two brackets and two bands. But you know that it's horrible because they used to lose the bracket. He's going to bite on the bracket. I had to put a big um, bites on the back and you know how it is it. And we start with Edu. This is the X-rays 
And this is the clean check, okay? You can see I didn't treat the lower arch because I thought like, how I do with braces. I just was going to put braces on the top and I'm just put in this line on the top. I ask for rotation, for expansion, for proclination, open the space for lateral incisors and boom, in three months, we had everything resolved. It was so quick, so easy. Of course, that Edu lost some aligners at school, of course, but I, I, I said her mom, his mom, don't worry, change, put the next aligner, put the next aligner, and it worked, it worked very well. Her mom, his mom was so happy, I was so happy, and of course, we asked for more because you have 18 months of unlimited aligners, and we asked for more expansion, okay, you can see here, more expansion, bring the cane and uh, bring the uh, incisor uh, extrusion. Of course, this extrusion is biologically, you know, you don't need to force that tooth to bring to, to, to extrude. And you can see, okay, that in seven months, we finished the case, we developed the upper arch and some that make me so happy that it's that I didn't treat the lower arch and you can see that the incisor gets space and correct by themselves. Maybe in the future she will need treatment, but it will be a very short treatment and you don't know what it's going to be in five years something very magical that it helped to us to correct this kind of treatment of malocclusion. Another case is this Francisco has the same problem like Edu, but I was more comfortable to offer my, my treatment by Invisalign first. I treat just the upper arch, okay, to correct the anterior cross by to develop to expansion, of course, it's then to alveolar, but they they respond very good, and you get space, and you can see it happened the same like Edu. Look at these lower incisors. I didn't treat anything on the lower arch, and it happened like this. It was so quick. Moms are happy, parents are happy, kids are happy, and the result is good. I bring this case, okay, this is a very comprehensive case with Invisalign. Um, Gonzalo came to me because of this malocclusion, negative torques, uh, uh, very crowded, uh, midline off, um, class two on the molar and cane on the right side, a deep bite, not over jet, okay, and the x-rays, cephalometric, okay, and this is the first clean shake, okay, I start to expand, a procline everything to get an uh, overjet, to start to, to correct the class 2 malocclusion, you can see on the, like this, the upper arch, we expand, procline, I use some teeth to get the anchorage, okay? And then I distalize. Of course, he needs to wear elastics all the time. And he is like, he was like this, okay? And that moment, we, he told me that he wants to get married and he wants a very quick treatment, okay? And offer him a corticotomy, okay? We did a corticotomy on the, you can see on the upper arch, okay, here, you can see this, the corticotomy. Um, you have, you can plan with the clean check that that is the only uh, teeth that are going to move and you can plan everything. And the patient change the aligner every three days, okay, and wear the elastic. I ask him, like a, 
he can eat with the aligner, but he can be without the aligner just one hour a day, okay? And he was a very, very good patient. And in three months, we almost finished the case. I removed everything because he went to get, a, this is the, we checked the, the good resorption because the treatment was so quick, okay, so fast. He get married, he went the honeymoon for a month, month and a half, and then he came back. Of course that we have some relapse, even that he was wearing the last aligner just for sleep, but he was on the honeymoon. And we start again, we ask for more aligners. Of course, when you know the patient is good, you, you want to be perfect occlusion and I asked for more aligner. He wore 25 more aligner. I put by drums. I love by drums to, to correct the, the class two occlusion because they, does, they disocclude the posterior and you can displace the, the, the, the mandible so quick, okay? He was a very good patient. He wore the aligners. You can see how I changed the attachment, they are big because you need to good engagement between your aligner and your teeth, okay? This is the finishing clean check. You, you get picked with the finishing treatments, okay? Mm. Hold on. Oops. Stop. Let me go again. Um, we are here. Sorry. Look at this. He is with the midline on with a very developed upper and lower arch. We had overjet. Okay. And he finished like this. And he's very satisfied with this result. You can see the, the difference on him, okay? And it looked like a surgery, but it's just with the liner, okay? It, of course, it takes time because he stopped uh, the treatment, but it, it takes 18 months, almost two years to finish this case. We had the final x-rays, not good resorption. And well, the last case is um, this woman that uh, asked, asked me first, he came, she came to my, to my appointment to say like, she wants to remove, um, she wants to remove the canine because she was biting on the cheek. And I told her, um, of course, that she doesn't wipe braces. And she, we, we, we offered her the Invisalign and she said that she was going to, to try. This is the clean shake, okay. We open the space to retroclimb the canine, we expand the lower, the upper arch. And this is the result in 12 weeks. She was on, my favorite patient, she wore all the time. She, she never, she never missed an appointment and she's so happy with, with the treatment. And we are too, because she's 17 years old and she, she can eat and, and the rest of her life. <laughs> this is, okay. And the final, if I'm talking about um, digital technology, uh, we have this amazing tool. If you have, I have a patient in Malta, I have a patient in Angola, in South Arabia, and you can give it to them, this kit, this is from Strauma, and it's just with the application. And I see more, this patient that the patient live in Portugal, because you can ask them to scan, every three days, every week, whatever you want, whatever you need. 
and you can see how they are fitting the aligners, how they are cleaning their aligners. Uh, the application asks to wear, to take photos with the aligner and without. And you can check everything. You can compare with your clean check if it's going well. And I think this is an amazing tool for, for everybody because it could help for the surgeon, for the orthodontics. It's not for, for everybody. Okay. Well, and thank you very much. Uh, I hope you like it. And I'm here to answer all the questions. And then uh, it was a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. You covered everything. Uh, you covered the children, you covered uh, elder patients, you covered orthodontic surgery, everything that we can ask uh, for you. Uh, and I think we can go on with the questions. Um, okay, now let's start. Um, someone asked, uh, how much did this case uh, lasted? But I'm not sure which case are we talking about, but you uh, mentioned uh, the uh, treatment duration. So I'm passing this question. Uh, what is the difference between SMART versus SPARC system? They are asking. Uh, Invisalign and SPARC, the difference. SMART versus SPARC. Spark is the uh, system that you are using, but I think they are smart is the bracket system. Are they referring to? I have no idea about that. Uh, the, uh, the person who asked the question, if they can uh, open the question, maybe we can answer it accordingly. Uh, one question is that I ask as a periodontologist, isn't this problem if the midline is shifted in the lower jaw? Uh, I think the first case they are asking. If the lower midline is? Isn't this uh, a problem if the midline is shifted in the lower jaw? I don't know. Uh, maybe they are referring to the frenulum. I don't know. Well, if... If the, the mandible is on because of the, we just move teeth to the center of the midline, okay? Uh, I think it's not gonna be a problem periodontically, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, because if, if there are, there are autonomic, sometimes that they extrude, uh, extract a, a lower incisor to correct some mm -hmm. malocclusion, I think it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem also as an, uh, as we consider about the occlusion, about the canine and the molars, if they are in, in good occlusion, in good yeah. shape, uh, in good occlusion, it won't be a problem. But if the uh, doctor is referring to the frenulum, maybe if, if it's going to be a problem, maybe we can do frenectomy, but I don't know about this case. A uh, one uh, attendee is asking about what disadvantages do aligners have compared to traditional orthodontic treatments? Now I'm t thinking about disadvantages. I, I don't have one. <laughs> if you have one, please say so. No advantage of braces on... Yes, on what disadvantages do aligners have compared to traditional orthodontic treatment? I think they are referring to braces. Uh, well, advantage, I think, advantage or disadvantage? Because disadvantage, disadvantage. Ah, okay. Well, I think just one disadvantage that I think, but you have to you have to manage that one, is that they can remove, okay? Um, it's the only problem, but I have some patients that they don't wear them and you have to ask for more aligners because they are not fitting well and you repeat that so many times. But that kind of patient, if it not um, cooperate, with aligner is not going to cooperate with braces and that kind of patients are not going to cooperate even with them, with themselves. And I think it's the only disadvantage But with kids, 
I think it's an advantage because they remove and they can clean better the tea. And for me, it's like you, I don't, it's not a disadvantage because you have to motivate your patient, you have to be a quick treatments to, to cooperate and um, no, I don't have, now I'm so happy uh, since I just put any more braces. Um, I have three kids, I enjoy them. I can just close my clinic at, at right hours and I don't have to see uh, emergency appointments at the end of the, of the, the day. Same here. <laughs> And uh, the question is that uh, the case with the orthodontic surgery patients, uh, how long did it last? Uh, well, um, the pre-surgery, we take like um, eight to 10 months. And after surgery, we take like a year, okay? It's like two years and a half. And maybe it would be shorter just because this patient, he's young kids and he, he used to uh, forget to wear them and I push it him. Now he's, I, you just have to tell them that if you want to finish quick, you have to wear the elastic and that's it. But if it case, like it could be two years and a half. Of course, it would take time and you can promise that it's gonna be a quick, um, in you, when you have a growing patient, you have to be careful with this kind of treatment. I think it's more or less the same nowadays with braces and uh, aligners, more or less they are the same. Yes. Uh, huh, they are asking about the Invisalign smart system and the spark that you're using, the differences. Yes. Do you have any difference? Yes, of course that Invisalign has almost 20 years on the market. They are leader on the market because they are the best. It, it, it, it, it, you can't compare the software, the, the client attention, everything. They are quick, um, but Spark, I'm trying because I like to try. I like to offer another things and I'm very happy. I am, the, the one difference that the patients are telling me that it's more flexible. And the aligner, um, my, I have three kids. The, the, the older, she's wearing Invisalign. And uh, Enrique, he's seven, and he wore aligners, Spark, just for two months to proclaim the, the, the um, opera incisor. And it worked so good without pain and I'm really happy with Spark, but I don't have any result to, to say, but the software are very good, excellent, and I'm very happy with Spark. If you want, you want to try. <laughs> okay. Uh, another question is that, uh, how long do you use an aligner? Um, I think it depends on the, system or one aligner, for example, in Invisalign, you use it a week, maybe in other uh, systems, it, it may be different, right? Well, my protocol at the beginning, all the patients change every 14 days. Mm -hmm. Then you will change every 10 days. And at the end, it will change every seven days. But Imagine Invisalign Express that you only have seven aligners, the patient needs to work every 14 days because you don't have chance to more patients, to more aligners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you give us a detail about uh, um, after you finish your treatment, what do you do with your retainers? Um, I'm not using any fixed align, a fixed retainer anymore because I think it's not good for for the hygiene. I'm, I, I use Vivera, is the uh, aligner uh, retainer from Invisalign. But at, at the end of the treatment, if the if the treatment is comprehensive, uh, they were three months 
the last two aligners. I try to to program that the the the um, the last aligner doesn't have too much movements. Okay, and you don't know if they are going to put uh, any restorative or to do an implant, but on a hundred and let's say that the 95% it's uh, Essex retainers from Invisalign or Vivera. Vivera, okay. Another question is that, uh, thanks for presentation, one of your woman patients treatment, why didn't you choose using Premolar as a canine instead of using an implant? Uh, canine? Yes, uh, why did you choose yes. Premolar as, uh, why didn't, yani, it depends on the smile design, I guess. Yes, it was on the pain of her profile. She already had more, two more, uh, negative torque on the canines and when you are a woman you need volume of your lips and she was 30 and she she needs a wider smile and that's why we we decide to open the space for an implant okay another question is for the children uh, if you have cross uh, with your patient uh how, at what age do you start your treatment? How early do you start your treatment? Um, and what about, uh, uh, how do you cope with these children? Um, if they are really small. How do you talk? Okay. First, um, I, when you have cases like Edu or, or Francisco, they, are, they were seven. I start with my, my, my son that he was eight. I think that when you have a malocclusion, you have to start as quick as you have to resolve that malocclusion. Um, it's going to be a short treatment. You you are specific. Um, uh, of, you have specific things to correct, and you need to uh, tell them. You need to motivate them. You. I used to tell them that I have the police that it's watching them on school and I can see on my cell phone and mom is going to know if you are worth them. There is an application that say, is try, try minder that they, they just stop to wear the liner and they just uh, press a button, they eat and they start again. And mom sometimes tell me, He's making me crazy because when I take time to cook, he's very stressing and it's very nice, but you must to be very dynamic with them. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you. It's up to you. How do you treat the, how do you be uh, creative? I Children are different. You have to pick something that they are really interested in and maybe go on with that. Uh, again, how you talk with them, it's really important. Yes. Another question is that uh, about artificial intelligence. How do you use uh, the progress in artificial intelligence and orthodontics, their relationship? And do you think uh, this will take uh, the artificial intelligence, will it take the place of people, do you think? I think not. I think it's going to be helpful, help, help, helpful for us to treat our patient. It's, um, this is an application, okay, that you have to pay for each patient. You pay like a, a six euros per month for each patient, that the application send me an email from each patient, it's telling me how well, how fitting well they are the aligned. That's why the patient take a picture with the aligner and without. And it's going to calculate if they are fitting well, if there is if there is a gap between the teeth and the aligner. Okay. And it's helpful for me that I'm not watching the patient and just receive the the um, the the relatory of the of the case, and if I need to make in, take in touch with the patient, I just write down. But I, I have everything 
of the monitoring of the patient. Okay, can you uh, tell us uh, what do you use for attachments? A uh, flowable composite or composite? What do you do your attachments with? Uh, I use um, a very strong for the dentin. Uh, um, if you want, I, I can send to you an, a picture I don't have here. It's um, you, it, it's translucent, okay? Mm -hmm. Because no color, it's going to get the color of the teeth, okay? Um, I use the, the brand Evo Clark, mm -hmm. okay, Electric Evo Clark. It's very strong because if if not, they're going to get um, uh, attrition. Yes, a treat with the the aligners. Okay. When they are removing them, maybe if they are not loose, they will attrit. So it should be a really not flowable, but something a little bit stronger than that. Yes. I guess it's it's it's not for animal. You uh, the bulky. The I think it's bulky um, composite. And. And um, one of our uh, listeners, they are saying, thank you for a great web webinar. I guess it was really great. I mean, in a very limited time, you covered everything. Uh, you covered the protocol that you are using. It doesn't matter. Maybe we are using Imuzline Smart System or Ormco Spark or something else. Maybe we have so many other uh, brands in our countries. But I think you have to try them, I guess. Yes. Uh, what, which one works for you is the thing that we should uh, go on. But again, uh, if I refer to your uh, lecture topic again, we have so many uh, progress in technology. And 10 years ago, when I first tried Invisalign, I said, okay, I'm not going to use this. But now I'm using it. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm using it. So again, it's good for the patient and it's good for the doctor also. These uh, technology improvements, they are really good for both uh, of the patient and the doctor, I guess. So we covered a lot of uh, patients and we uh, saw our limits and we saw that uh, it's not, uh, again, technology that does this treatment, it's us that we are doing this treatment. We decide about the treatment. We decide about the uh, movement of the feet. So we have to know about ortho, orthodontics. So I think, uh, I mean, it was a wonderful webinar for me, for me as a Invisalign patient and Invisalign user. I mean, it was a wonderful webinar for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, oh, okay, then we have a lot of thank yous. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of thank yous. And they are saying thank you for sharing your valuable knowledge with us. You're welcome. It was a pleasure for me. Very pleasure. Uh, I mean, Elena, it was a wonderful evening. Um, and you have a wonderful clinic. I hope when this is all over, I will be coming to you, visiting oh, you in Lisbon. It will be a wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, again, if we have questions, we will try to, again, uh, keep in contact with you. Yes, of course. You can, uh, you have my cell phone or my Instagram and uh, I'm going to be open to, to help you wherever you want. And can you uh, tell us about your Instagram address? I put them the, the last... You did it. You did it. I, I didn't yeah. see. It. Sorry about that. Okay, Dan. I didn't get it. I have so many things in my... Yes, yes, I know. So, sorry, sorry about that. I didn't don't get it. Worry, don't worry. So everybody saw it. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, uh, we would like to, again, keep in touch with you and uh, be with you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye you so everybody. much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.